So, this is a thing. It's been a bit of an emotional month in the TV world. It's just that inevitable time in our lives when all of our favorite TV shows are coming to an end. But it's fall, and all of the TV shows are just supposed to be starting, yet all of these shows are ending during the summer. Just stop hurting my brain hole! And it got me thinking, a television writer really only has to write the finale for themselves. I mean, someone is usually dedicated about 10 years of their life to writing a TV show, and more often than not, they've had to bend over backwards for the executives and the fans. Which really makes perfect sense. I mean, if you were to be a stubborn old grump about it, well, guess what? You might be the one writing the show, but all of us out there watching it? We're kinda sorta signing your paycheck. But when it comes down to those last few episodes of a series, you really don't need to answer to anybody. Regardless of all the negative feedback from the fans, that episode will still result in the highest viewership of the year for that particular network. And there's simply nothing anybody can do about the actual content of that episode except the writer. And I know what you're thinking. If the fans lose respect for the writer, they'll no longer watch any more of their work. Well, wrong! No, that, that just doesn't happen! I don't see anybody boycotting Damon Lindelof for how he ended Lost. We all know what The Simpsons is now, yet they still brought back Futurama, both written by Matt Groening. I can even use Joss Whedon as an example. One of my favorite writers, yet he has this slight condition where he can't actually end something without first destroying the most beloved and innocent character that made it special in the first place. It's more of an obsessive compulsion than anything. I don't think he can really help himself. And after all has settled, Wash looks up and says, I'm a leaf on the wind, so watch how I sow. Oh, whoa! Whoa! No! I'm not! I'm not trying to write this! Don't! No, he's supposed to hug everybody! And how do the fans respond? They just want more! They can't get enough of the guy! He's like a nerd's crack cocaine, which is actually a very accurate description because he makes you feel like you just want to die. So you go and you seek out another Joss Whedon show for the short-term happiness it delivers, but when it's over, you just find yourself in another ugly pit of despair. But yeah, I'm pretty sure if it wasn't for Whedon enjoying his face the way it is, you know, completely intact and unbroken, I don't think we'd even have an Iron Man right now. And you don't have to look far to find people who agree. If you type into Google, why does Joss Whedon, the second thing you'll see is kill everybody, right next to why does Joss Whedon hates Donald Sutherland. Wait, what? Why does Joss Whedon hates Donald Sutherland? Well, I guess when I think of people on the internet, I think of a bunch of little golems. Why does he hate the Donald Sutherland? Why? I mean, sure, he hasn't been in anything good since the Italian job, but give the guy some credit, yes! What I'm trying to say is that by the time the last episode has aired, the writer isn't exactly trying to impress anybody except themselves. Whether the fans agree with the last episode or not, the creator just wants to have this complete set of episodes that tells one really long story. How would you like it if your nine year long story ended in some cliche conventional way just to appeal to a mass audience? They could kill every single character on the show for all it matters. In fact, I can think of three shows off the top of my head that do just that, and they're like my favorite ones. Well, one of those is kind of reserved for Game of Thrones. There isn't anybody getting out of that one alive. So if any of you out there are pounding your fists on the table about how Dexter's final choices were uncharacteristic, or the way they ended Breaking Bad goes against everything the show stands for, just chill out, man. Like. It's over. That's what happened. Somebody wrote it on a page and then you watched it on a TV. Just get over it. I mean, clearly you liked most of the show to stick with it this long. The writers spent eight years writing what you wanted to see. Let them write what they want for a few episodes. It's not going to change anything. You still watched it. And you're still going to watch the Saul Goodman spin-off. Stop lying to yourself. Just go outside. Eat a pear. I, I don't know. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm sorry I took like a few weeks to come out with this episode, but clearly I got a new set. I think it's pretty ballin'. Um, if you liked what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, and also, I might be doing a Let's Play soon. I'm not the biggest gamer. I mean, I, I, I game probably an average amount, maybe a little bit above average, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm toying with that idea, so keep your eyes peeled.